and welcome back to Battletech. It is time to continue our Swan Song campaign, the Ultra Heart campaign, where we're trying to beat the career mode on the very, very highest difficulty settings. Last time you witnessed how Hogbite, the leader of our mischievous crew, has been shot out of action. It'll take 23 days for him to get back. And it pains me to say that potentially Bradford will be leading our team into battle. I know. That is a pretty scary thought. Let's take a look what we would want to do. We got, still got two missions that we can do for the Free World League that uh, potentially will not reduce our reputation with anyone else. I absolutely love the Polar dome oh, it's a fantastic bi uh, biome i don't like the fact that all of these here are for the local government that is usually bad so if we were to go into this mission that's what a one star mission uh, one school mission yeah we can handle that a bit of credits and even more loot sounds like something that i can get behind we're looking for weapons we're looking for alternatives and we're going to go in with a injured the blackjack that's fine black uh bradford will take the blackjack and reaper will take over the vindicator so our team remains pretty much the same yes we do have a bit of damage on the back of the blackjack but that's okay Time to destroy an enemy base. Bradford, you got uh, the option to lead the troops this time. I'm not sure if I like that thought. So let's take a look at the base. Wow, that's a ginormous one. Not too bad that we do have a couple of sniping units uh, that will come in handy. We will definitely need to go up this pass and then we might want to fight alongside this high ground i generally know the map it's one of the Let's move. maps which is being reused from time to time it's not completely randomly you generated like it would be in xcom 2 so you're fighting on the same map sometimes from different angles and the one thing that i remember distinctly is that this year always was pretty much a choke point and that the base was well, on my way. very well defended. That might be different on this map here. Got it. But my memory has taught me to be careful with this map. Good. So far we haven't even seen no an enemy. First enemy contact is happening now. Roger that. A serious ice. Ice is rough terrain, and we, that means we will take more stability damage. But uh, we are also less likely to be hit with melee attacks. On my way. Piece of cake. Good. We got a couple of turrets for sure, but also a couple of moving units. We're just going to go into reserve mode. Hostile on sensors. And if the turrets are already in range, I would even consider like moving further back. We definitely want to stay out of range of the turrets. Yes, Commander. Good, we got a nice little PPC here. Fantastic. Vindicator moves up. Aims for that thing. And that is one little truck or less and that's exactly why we're not bringing a knife to a gunfight guys moving up Taking the high road. into a nice position where we can easily tank and that's a fire starter that. Fire keep that in mind he is going that's probably the standard loadout it's very likely that he's going to try to overheat us. First tower just joined the fight. Waiting for orders. One tower we can handle 
two plus towers potentially not. Not going to go for this guy. I much rather we'll use the better chances to go for the scorpion. Yeah, it was the right decision. Redford just killed this guy. Problem. All right, no point in using our inspiration yet. Might as well just shoot. Oh, That's fine. No problem. The reason why I didn't want to do it is he is entrenched, so he's taking less damage per by Let default. Might as well let him come. He cannot overheat anyone. So let's reserve uh -huh. and wait for both of them to move. Fire start the shoots and it's not even close enough for any of his flamers. So yeah, that was a no show. We're going to focus on the fire starter and we should act now and get rid of uh, the guy for before anything major happens the tower cannot shoot us behind the hill which is why we're going to keep on my way our position right here taking the shot yeah that already drains Quite a bit of his armor. Ready for orders. Panther is the other sniper. That's oh, only fifty percent, sixty percent. I do not want to stand in a position where I could easily be hit. That one is fine. We got cover against any shots that we are going to take from the panther here. And the side horse is destroyed. The fire starter is now in a pretty difficult position. He made a crucial mistake by just moving up and trying to hit us. Moving back. And he's almost Waiting down. You, Commander. This here will be out of reach of the tower, which is exactly what I was hoping we would achieve. Time to fly. And it is in a good defensible position. Uh -huh. All right. Pastata has taken too much damage from the left hand side. The arm. Uh, had been destroyed and then eventually it was completely done that's a tower from high ground and the rocket still can hit so we're taking some damage not the end of the world but definitely some damage what can I do for you I will decide that enough is enough and instead of going in, I'm doing exactly what I meant to do last turn. We're moving out. Panther is taking a couple of shots, but thanks to our armor, that's exactly why you're maximizing the armor. Look at it. We don't even have an armor breach. We are going to take a normal shot. I'm not going to take the precision shot. And even if the chances were low, I just want to get rid of his... Commander. Of his movement blip. So he's in a nice position there. I'll give him that. Mainly because he has partial cover against every single movement that we could take Roger. 
Threadford might take a couple of rockets if we're not able to kill this guy. So, precision shot. Got him down to three hit points on his torso. Aye, aye. Holy moly. Luckily, we got some LRMs, uh, so these missiles tend to spread out Firing over multiple target. hit zones. But again, none of them uh, hit the center so close, but yet so far. Taking quite a bit of damage. Damage minimal. No sweat. If I start a moves in. Got it. Target destroyed. And Lily has destroyed the target. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. We're moving up. Roger that. Towers cannot see us uh, because uh, they do not. It's almost like squad side in XCOM 2. As long as they can't directly see you, unless they do have sensor lock, there's no way for them to bombard us. Good, we're moving over into decent positions. They can't react. And now it's our turn to move. Firing a full salvo. Full salvo destroys the tower. That turret is gone. We're knowing that there is another turret over there. We're staying behind this hill. I hear ya. Just out of line of sight. Multiple turrets, okay. No, these are just normal structures. So we're bracing. Enemy cannot take a turn. Waiting for orders. And now it's our turn. What's up, boss? To deal with the remaining defensive forces. Must be another turret somewhere there. Copy that. For now, let's kill that one. That turret is gone. Orders. Good to go. In yep, the last one is over here. Okay, cool. Beat the cake. Enemy structure damage, Commander. Moving Good. Blackjack moves over. And we can fully unload. Fantastic. Turret destroyed. I hear ya. Good. This mission worked out well for us. Uh, mostly because we were having enough long-ranged fighting capabilities, so that worked out well. Now it's just a matter of uh, cleanup. I think there is not even going to be an enemy that is going to join us here. So we can just destroy all of the structures. Roger. Let me speed up the gameplay a bit so that you guys don't need to watch me just destroying five buildings without enemies. Fantastic. Five out of five buildings destroyed. And that brings us to the end of the first mission. That was rather fast. So, the core takeaway from that mission was making sure that you are outside of uh, the distance or the range of most of the towers. Typically, if you find yourself kind of in a fight with enemies and towers on top of it, it really stings. So, we destroyed the entire base garrison, gave us uh, some extra, and 
we can also uh, we even destroyed all of the towers so that gave us even some extra extra so that looked good what do we want to do another fire starter piece would be great we got a panther ready to go I think we're also going to collect some medium lasers, to be honest, and some SRMs. That's a good one as well. I mean, I like the idea of a fire starter, don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic mech, and you cannot have enough of those. You know what? Let's get it. Although... Yeah, we we received it nonetheless. I really wanted a couple of lasers. The uh, small range, medium, uh, the small range missiles, the six pack here, that was important. And a couple of heat sinks would have been nice as well. So far, so good. We're kind of getting that base equipment together, which we will need in order to make modifications to our own mechs. I mentioned that I wasn't particularly happy with the standard loadout, but in order to change that, number one, you need to make sure that they are not being damaged, and number two, you actually need a bit of different equipment. What you wanted is back online. Good. Since we're playing with strip mechs, what you are going to see is that the mech that we've just received the panther here comes in as completely naked, but at least intact, so that's something, I suppose. We can theoretically put it in a storage unit or do whatever we feel like, but it is definitely by far better than the urban mech, so might as well keep on to it for now. But before we're diving too deep into that, let's take a look what else is available. Any of uh, these missions here? Is any of these missions paying really, really well? A battle, one and a half stars, uh, schools. Typically, I don't want to work for the planetary government because that's not a faction, and the Capellian Confederation, on the other hand, very much is a faction. But since we've already like messed up our relationship a bit with them. That might be one of the factions that we're going to drop. So in terms of dealing with that, 600,000 would at least give us enough funds to make repairs and really work with the max. So let's go into the battle and see what we can do. Let's begin our battle mission. be a quick kind of four on four battle that we're up against i like the planet moving to position i absolutely love tundra uh, tundra and cold biodomes because your laser weapons and i will confess that i'm a sucker for laser weapons i just absolutely love them i do have a confirmation bias towards them they are fantastic they are good and they are even better in these environments so great biome to begin with then probably the only thing that wasn't optimal at the beginning was really working for the local government that's something that you typically would not want to do we got another fire starter here by the way so if we play our cards right, we might be in a situation where we can salvage that guy. Let's get rid of his evasion blips. Failed to connect. Ready to get it on. Awaiting waiting for order. Good jump in over here Taking the high road. and our small weapons will have a pretty high chance to hit it so we have just reduced his blips 
which means Bradford, if he's not completely dropping the ball, could technically hit this guy and down him. There we go. That lo looks like a pretty good place, kind of half distance, which is where the blackjack wants to operate. Well, he has hit everything but the center torso. Pilot injured. Commander. Enemy knocked down. That's a we'll not go. good, but also not bad kind of result. Trying to hit the other leg. And we probably want to kill whatever has just delivered so many rockets that look like a weapon base like some sort of a Good to go. heavy heavy tank of some sort Locked on all right well at least that guy is gone waiting on you commander i would Put us in reserve and let the guy come. Enforcer takes a shot, but not against so many blips. Minus one evasion. I hear ya. That's okay for us. Again, five points of evasion, and look at that. We got an archer. That's a heavy mech, and we gotta be really careful with that guy. Enforcer eats some more damage. As long as Lily can tank with all of her evasion, we will be fine. We're going to use Precision Strike here in an effort to just get this guy down. Didn't fully work out. Standing by. All right, moving up, the Vindicator might take the hit. Uh, the arrow is a strong. Very much missile-based enemy. You can see a lot of enemies. It's a good platform. It can hit very well even against multiple blips, which explains why that one was successful. Position confirmed. Enforcer takes even more damage. Let's put ourselves on reserve. And the blackjack here should hopefully kill the enforcer. A lot of damage that we can deal. The whole right hand side is open. Oh my gosh, that guy is still standing like zero armor. And yet he's still standing Engaging target. there we go hope we can salvage that waiting for order okay the main idea now will be to really create as much distraction I mean, I as possible sure. even if that means we're only fighting and shooting once but yeah that's it Ow. See, that's exactly why we want to do that left Internal arm. Structure damage. Let's go. Almost destroyed. This guy punches so, ya. so hard. Okay, we can move before the archer can. What can I do for you? He has two long-range missile 20 batteries which explains his abnormously high output of uh, missiles let's try to hit him in the left torso because that's where his that's where his missiles are located Ooh, 
or turning around. That way the other arm is the only thing that he could attack. And we're even behind cover. Alright, sensors impaired. We got one LRM-20 killed. Good to go. Which means he has much, much less firepower. We're going to put her in further reserve. I don't want to get rid of the blips yet. Action, Commander. All right, we're juggling the aggro. Waiting for orders. Moving deep into Got the it. water. Got it. An archer is going to take some more damage. We play our cards right, we should be fine. Reserve. Waiting for orders. Alright, Bradford. Don't Not mess bad. this one up. Trying to hit his torso there. Fantastic. That explosion Solid connection on that one. deals so much damage because he's now without his Without his LRM twenties, still keeping our right hand side here. He's down to three medium lasers. That's not the end of the world. I hear ya. Good to go. Heading out. Giving them everything I've got. Fantastic. He's knocked down. That's another hit. I think he already Waiting took on one, if commander. I'm not mistaken. Don't need to He's slow, so he will not be able to reach the fire starter and retaliate. All right. Second missile battery is definitely gone. He's he's burning. Not hitting anything with his little laser. What can I do for you? So we got him exactly where we would like to have him. Moving further back and still taking the advantage of cooling, which means we can use all of our weapons. And there we go, Archer down. That's a nasty, pretty large enemy. We can salvage some of that mech. It would be fantastic. Heavy mechs, good. Oh, I forgot. We were not allowed to salvage anything. Uh. Oh boy, it was an archer, 70 tons. It's one of uh, the DLC mechs, which is quite nice. It's a missile platform, like I said, and you can attach beacons so that it deals even more damage. But you've noticed just how powerful it was in terms of dealing uh, damage. It could fire from off screen, which it did pretty well. It then almost blew our arm apart from a long range and then it just took a massive beating but still was uh, standing firm i knew exactly where his lrm 20s were located because i know the mech but if you're targeting the wrong position those missiles will eventually get you down cool so about half an hour in which means I'm going to check on to our pilots. Bradford, I think, has earned a bit more gunnery skill. That's good. Lily has done fantastic. I absolutely like her movement on the fire starter. Mox is training guts. And Dragon over here can get a little bit more pilot rating. So far, so good. 
Only one who is not giving any training is Hogbite. Well, that is too bad, my friend. I think the next time we're going to do some signal stopping, destroying a base. That sounds interesting, specifically a two uh, school mission with an absolute starting lance should be a rather difficult endeavor. I think we're going to do some salvage, some pay here because we still need salvage, but the 520,000 uh, is too good to pass. In terms of purchasing items in general, the system here seems to be, seems to be rich, relatively speaking. I like the Marauder purchase, oh, it's not bad. An AC-20, that is quite a weapon, probably not wor uh, worth the 200,000 for us now. Only large lasers, LBX-10s, that's a shotgun weapon, also good but not worth uh, the amount of money that it would cost. UAC-10s are great. That could be an option for our blackjack. UIC 5s as well. Probably the better option because it's only 9 tonnage. And heat sinks. So yeah, we need medium lasers. That's a given. There are a couple of neat weapons here. For instance, the LB-10. Kind of a 300 meter type of shotgun weapon. Sends away quite a bit of armor and is good to hit, uh, hit the head. If we could maybe get that one and build it into, build it into our blackjack here, that would be good because the blackjack, realistically speaking, the AC2s are shit. Let's let's not uh, sugarcoat it. It's the worst weapon in the entire game. Having two of them is just a waste of space. Having an, uh, a shotgun instead would make the whole damage output more bearable um, and not as range dependent. I think with a Vindicator, I am considering keeping him a sniper for now. Uh, mainly because you could build in another PPC or a couple of lar uh, large lasers that would work as well. Just kind of for the extra range, you know, in keeping him on long distance. But then again, it feels that the LRM5s are a bit of a missed opportunity. The Panther definitely needs to have a completely different setup. I really don't like that uh, setup with the PPC and the long uh, and the short range missiles. That is so bad just in theory. You do have a long ranged weapon and then you do have a short ranged weapon and its overall firepower is abysmal. And we got to deal uh, do something with the fire starter. So there is more than enough that we should do in order to uh, become better. I'm not sure if we have enough time. Uh, that, that will probably be a limiting factor. So let's go with, uh, or let's end uh, today's episode here. We, we have one more run before we're going to leave uh, the solar system. And when we're leaving the solar system, it's a good moment in time to kind of rework uh, some of the mechs. If I'm not mistaken, one of the, the DLCs also offers a gift package after the very first day. So the moment that we're starting to move, the whole... Um, there, there will be a gift package that we're receiving and that might replace one of those mechs. Anyways, that brings us to the end of uh, today's episode. We are two episodes in and it is already intense. We have a few injured mechs and an injured uh, mech pilot. Couldn't be more intense at the beginning, except you're losing mechs. 
And if you like the content, if you like Battletech, feel free to leave a comment and a like down below. That pushes the algorithm and uh, submits that content to a broader audience. Today's question for our discussion is which of the light max is your favorite one and why? Take care and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.